OnePlus is one of the great Android success stories of recent years, coming from humble beginnings in 2014 to now having displaced the likes of HTC and LG on store shelves in many countries. But this year something has changed. OnePlus now has the scale and the clout to actually try and directly challenge the big name flagships from Samsung, Huawei and others. That's why we don't just have a OnePlus 7 launching this spring, but also this, the OnePlus 7 Pro. I'm Alex from Android Central, let's jump into our full review. From the moment I first picked up the OnePlus 7 Pro, it was clear to me that this was a different kind of OnePlus phone. In fact, you could slap the name of any of the big phone brands on the back of this thing and it wouldn't seem out of place. That's not because it's derivative or unambitious, but because OnePlus's design chops can now match its larger competitors. Whatever you might say about the OnePlus 3, 5 and 6, their main appeal was in how they performed and the value proposition on offer, not necessarily how they looked. That's not so with the 7 Pro. This phone looks legitimately stunning. I'm using the blue version with this frosted glass finish which flickers between purple and sky blue depending on the angle of the light. That's framed by a slick gradiented metal border. Oh, and FYI, between the super thin sidewalls and the matte finished rear, this phone is incredibly slippery, so maybe think about picking up a case to use with it, we'll have some links in the description. But what truly sets the OnePlus 7 Pro apart, particularly on the shelves of carrier stores in the west, is its front. This thing is all screen, and it's glorious. No bezel, no notch, no hole punch, just an expansive, curved 6.67 inch Quad HD Fluid AMOLED panel that to my eye looks as impressive as anything I've seen in any other phone. Part of what's so impressive is that, with the exception of the very slightest of chins down below, you really are holding an all screen phone, and this is going to sound corny, but watching video on this thing is just a different and more immersive experience as a result. What's also unique about this panel is its refresh rate. That's the maximum number of frames it can push per second. Almost all phone screens run at 60Hz right now, but the OnePlus 7 Pro is the first OLED screen with a 90Hz refresh rate. It's really hard to show this off in video at 30 frames a second for obvious reasons, but it means that everything you do on the phone looks and feels smoother. It's a great fit for this huge and almost entirely bezel-free display. There is one big trade-off with this panel though, which we'll get to a little later in the review. But anyway, when you're pushing out up to 90 frames per second, you are going to need some serious horsepower, and unsurprisingly the 7 Pro does not disappoint. It has the latest Snapdragon 855 processor, and the base model starts with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, with an upgrade to 8 plus 256 for just $30 more. Or you can max it out with 12 gigs of RAM for more still, that's the model I've been reviewing here. And look, that's a vanity spec for sure, it's a little ridiculous that the phone I'm using right now has 50% more memory than the laptop I'm using to write this script, but it's all extra future-proofing, and future-proofing that goes hand-in-hand hand with OnePlus's excellent track record for software updates. The 7 Pro is also the first phone to ship with faster new UFS 3.0 storage, has twice the bandwidth of the previous version, meaning everything from saving photos to loading games will be all the more performant. There's also a much improved in-screen fingerprint scanner that's both quicker and more reliable than the old bad sensor used in the OnePlus 6T. The larger sensor size, along with software optimizations, make this a much better option for the new phone. It's not yet up to the standard of a regular capacitive fingerprint scanner, but the gap is certainly narrowing. So OnePlus phones have always been quick, but between the faster storage, the ludicrous loadout of RAM and that 90Hz panel, well, it almost feels like they're cheating here. This is the fastest and smoothest phone I've ever experienced, and it's been a joy to use. That experience is helped out by the inclusion of a much, much improved haptic motor that replaces the mushy vibration feedback seen in earlier OnePlus phones with sharp, firm taps more appropriate to a high-quality, high-end smartphone. Whether you're typing or swiping your way through apps, or just getting buzzed with notifications, the upgraded haptics give the impression that you really are using a premium device and not something cheap and cheerful. In order to pull off its impressive screen to body ratio, the OnePlus 7 Pro takes a novel approach to its front facing camera. Most of the time it's tucked away inside the body of the phone, and when needed it pops out of the top with this neat little sci-fi glow effect. I was prepared to hate this going in, but in my time with the 7 Pro I actually didn't mind it at all. The bonus of not having a screen cut out is something I appreciate all the time, and when I do want to take a selfie, it's quick to pop out and gives me an obvious area to focus on as I take the shot. Even face unlock using the pop-out camera is surprisingly quick. 
According to OnePlus's numbers, it takes just over half a second to retract out. Obviously, any moving parts are going to be a potential point of failure, but as an added safety feature, the phone will detect freefalls using its gyro, and when it does that, it'll automatically retract the camera into the body, which is a pretty neat little feature. So far, the only complaint I have here is that 9 times out of 10, when the camera pops up straight from my pocket, it's absolutely covered in dust and lint. But as far as dust and other stuff working its way into the mechanism, OnePlus reassured me that that whole area is sealed up internally, so there's no danger of anything getting in. That applies to water too, despite the fact the 7 Pro doesn't have any official IP rating for water resistance. Supposedly that's because of the cost of getting that certification. OnePlus says it still doesn't recommend submerging the phone in water for any period of time, so the messaging is a bit mixed, but I've been using it out and about in the rain here in London, and so far I haven't had any issues. OnePlus's OxygenOS software is one of the company's greatest strengths, delivering a speedy, pure Android experience with a generous feature set to allow power users to tweak and tune things to their heart's content. I've kept things relatively stock on my OnePlus 7 Pro, but I've still appreciated all the little things like the plentiful gesture options, the widget shelf, which now helps you remember where you parked, among other things, and of course the many ways to customise your navigation options. OnePlus lets you choose between the standard Android 3 button setup, a pixel style 2 button setup, or fully gestural navigation that frees up the entire screen for your apps and content. I love this gesture setup on the 6T, and I still think that of all the brands that are trying to do gesture navigation on Android right now, OnePlus's system remains the best. OnePlus's gaming mode too has undergone a tune-up as part of a marketing tie-in with eSports team Fnatic. Fnatic mode lets you dedicate all the power of your phone's processor and cellular connection to the game you're in, while also minimising distractions from notifications and the like. At the other end of the spectrum, Google's digital wellbeing feature is now officially supported in OxygenOS, and it's loaded out of the box to help you keep tabs on your app usage. On a similar note, OnePlus has developed the new Zen Mode feature, which is a slightly extreme solution to force you to disconnect for a while and focus on something besides your phone. Zen Mode is activated through the Quick Settings menu and, after a few confirmation screens, essentially bricks your phone for a full 20 minutes. Apps will still work in the background, but you won't see notifications or updates until the timer is up. And you can still make emergency calls and receive incoming calls and use the camera, but besides that, your phone is totally locked down until the timer runs out. There is no escape hatch whatsoever, even rebooting the phone won't cut short your 20 minute timeout. It's a super interesting feature playing into the whole digital health angle that's becoming popular over the past year, and it's something I have very mixed feelings about, given that you can activate it once your phone is unlocked, without reconfirming with a pin or fingerprint. Possibly opens it up to some abuse there. Anyway, once you're done with your 20 minutes of zen, you can then go and share your achievement with the world. Despite all these new features though, OxygenOS for the moment still feels a lot like previous versions. And that's fine, though I'm left with the impression that a big visual update is probably due within the next year to refresh some of the legacy Android feel of the launcher and some of the other apps. At least if OnePlus's track record of platform updates holds true, this phone should be in line for a speedy update to Android Q not long after Google's Pixel phones. Triple cameras are table stakes for a high-end smartphone in 2019, and OnePlus has upped its photo game considerably from the middling performance of last year's 6T. Leading the new photographic trio is a new main camera with a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor behind an f1.6 lens with optical image stabilization. The 586 is the sensor used in the Honor View 20 among others, and we'll see more phones still launching with this camera before the month is out. The 7 Pro, however, is the first to launch in the West with the IMX586 Plus optical stabilization for improved low light performance. And that's flanked on either side by a 3x telephoto, an 8 megapixel sensor at f2.4, also with OIS, plus an ultra wide camera using a 16 megapixel sensor behind an f2.2 lens. OnePlus's new camera array is a serious upgrade, and considerably more versatile than cameras in any of its previous phones. The main camera combines four pixels into one to shoot clearer 12 megapixel images using the 48 megapixel sensor, and this also gives you more wiggle room in terms of digital zoom before you hit 3x and switch over to the telephoto lens. I've generally been pleased with photos from the main camera, though I have noticed that shots seem a little bit more muted than equivalent pictures from the Galaxy S10 or a Pixel 3. Part of that is just a difference in saturation which is easily addressed in Google Photos after the fact, but the 7 Pro is also more inclined to crush shadows and produce shots with slightly narrower dynamic range than top tier flagships, at least outside of its dedicated HDR mode. 
At the same time, I've come across instances of both the telephoto and the ultra-wide camera's missing focus, even in bright daylight conditions, and it's also disappointing to see that while the main camera produces impressively smooth 4K video, it's not possible to shoot video at all on either the ultra-wide or telephoto cameras. You have the same limitation in Nightscape mode, which is OnePlus's dedicated night shooting mode. Nightscape works fantastically well on the main camera, but unfortunately can't be used with either the telephoto or the ultra-wide. I don't want to seem too down on these cameras, but at least on the current firmware, it's one area where it's easy to see the difference between a OnePlus phone and a much more expensive flagship. Whether a slightly better camera is worth an extra two to three hundred dollars, however, is between you and your bank account. On balance, for most people, including me, these three cameras are going to be more than good enough. With a 4000 mAh battery on board, I was expecting pretty strong battery performance on the OnePlus 7 Pro. After all, 4000 is that magic number at which recent Android phones generally do away with battery anxiety altogether. But I'll be blunt, that's not the case with the 7 Pro. And it's not just me, many other reviewers I've spoken to who have this phone have had similar experiences. Pretty much everyone seems to agree that the 7 Pro's battery performance is a regression from the 6T. Bottom line is that this phone has, at best, extremely average battery life. As best I can tell, the main culprit is the 90Hz display, which seems to be more power hungry than in other devices. Power consumption when idling for what it's worth is great, but with the screen running in 90Hz mode, the phone can sometimes chew through battery power at an alarming rate that would sometimes push me below the 50% mark within just a few hours. You can save some power by switching the screen to 60Hz mode, but even then I was struggling to push past 4 hours of screen on time across a single day of around 15 hours of mixed use. Those aren't terrible figures, but they're also not great, and they're a long way off what I've been getting from the Huawei P30 Pro recently. You do at least have OnePlus's new Warp Charge 30 spec at your disposal. The bundle 30 watt plug can get you out of the danger zone extremely quickly, from 0 to 50% in as little as 20 minutes, and that's fantastic, but just the fact that you may need to consider an early evening refill is a little disheartening. The OnePlus 7 Pro is not quite a slam dunk. I feel like there's still some work to be done tuning the three rear cameras and eking out better HDR performance in particular, and the battery life I'm seeing out of my unit both in 90Hz and 60Hz modes is a disappointment, particularly considering how well older OnePlus phones performed with much smaller batteries. Despite both of these oversights, this is still a really great phone. OnePlus's new design brings some heat to the flagship competition, and although it comes at a cost in terms of battery life, the new display is gorgeous and a real differentiator for this phone. Plus, of course, it's no surprise to see roaring performance from a OnePlus flagship. The regular OnePlus 7, which we'll discuss in a future video, is the phone we might have expected to see from OnePlus this year. Minor, iterative upgrades at a relatively inexpensive price point. But the 7 Pro shows the company's ambition to move into the super premium phone market and eat the lunch of Samsung, Huawei, and Apple. OnePlus isn't quite there yet, but the 7 Pro shows just how incredibly close they are. At its starting price of $669 in the US, you need to spend a lot more money to get a better phone than this. At the same time, OnePlus is able to boast features that almost nobody else in the West is offering, like a 90Hz screen with no notch or cutout. If you want in on the ground floor with an excellent though imperfect handset, with a long life ahead of it, the 7 Pro is a great buy. Otherwise, maybe wait for this formula to be refined a little more in a possible OnePlus 7T Pro later in the year. That's it for now, if you like this video hit the subscribe button to see more like it, and be sure to hit the comments and give us your first impressions of the OnePlus 7 Pro. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.